In this video, I'll show you how to connect to MongoDB with Rad Studio's FireDAC using a sample app to filter with matches, sort data, and select the column with projections. MongoDB is a popular open source document-based database. We have our FD connection on here, and it specifies the driver of Mongo. We're connecting to a local database. You can go in the connection properties and see all the properties. Um, if you want to, you can download this with the URL that I'm gonna paste here on the screen. The FD connection is what the main thing you use to connect to the database. But if you remember, we're gonna use this uh, FT Mongo connection. And this is what we're gonna to use to uh, access the collections in the databases and stuff like that. So these are defined as private variables and we just cast right here after we connect to the database. And make sure on destroy, you wanna make sure you close the FD connection to your Mongo database so that it cleans up that cursor. And we also get the um, environment, Team Mongo environment right here. And that comes from the F connection. So the, there's a button here, load data, and this is gonna just load the sample and data in here. And it goes out to this JSON file and spins through it and loads that data in here. But the magic, if you will, is here on the button open click. Let me show you the designer first here. We have three edit boxes, the match, the sort, and the projection. And so on open, first thing we're gonna do is gonna close the query if it's already open, and then we clear the, the field defs. And this is because the projection changes or could change between runs. And so we may or may not have the same number of columns, the same column show up. So then we set the Q match, Q sort, and Q project properties of the query. So there's two ways to access the query. You can access the query property, which use the query builder, or you can specify JSON text on the Q match, Q sort, and Q project. And we just get those from the editors here. Then we open it. Now we look in the query results and we see if we got back the address.cord field or the grades field. Now we know, because we know our schema, that these are uh, nested data sets. We could instead look at the field type to see if it is uh, the type to be a nested data set as well. And then if it's a nested data set, we would uh, assign it here to the uh, another data set. So we have two different data sets we use here to show the embedded grids. So we just cast that field as a T data set field and get the nested data set that way. Okay, that's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and run this. The other great thing about this sample is it shows you how to uh, how these different parts of the query work. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this now. I've already loaded the data into the database so the collection's fully populated. And it's a, it's a bunch of restaurants here. So right now we're looking for um, matches with an address.zip code. So you see address is an embedded object here with these uh, properties inside of it here, these fields inside of it. And so we're looking at the zip code of the address. Okay, so that's the dot here. And so those all match. And then we're looking for the cuisine is not equal to Italian. So this is a little different syntax uh, because we're looking for not equal to instead of equal to. And so everything here is not equal to Italian. Now, uh, two things. First of all, you notice the cuisine is not in quotes, but address.zip code is. Typically, you put things in quotes, but I did this intentionally here because the quotes are only required if there's a dot here. So if I took the dot off here, that would give me an error message. But since there's no dot, you can actually get away with not including the quotes. But then here, this is using the diff a different kind of notation. So I can do not equals to, I can also do equals, and this just gives me Italian. But the simpler notation that you would typically use for equals is just to go like this. And that is gonna be, behave exactly the same. The reason I had to show the other one is because it shows you how to do the, the not equals to, and then if you're doing numeric fields, you can do greater than, less than, and there's other operators as well, in there as well. So that's the match. If I take the match out completely, it gives me back every uh, document in the collection. So here's the sort. Right now, it's sorted by cuisine. Oh, let's, uh, let's leave that off completely. So it's sorted by cuisine inverted. So Vietnamese, Cambodian, Malaysian on top. If I change this to one, it will sort it by cuisine ascending. So that's the two possible values and we can sort it by um, address.zip code. 
and now we've sorted it by address.zip code. So apparently we have a null zip code here. And we can take that off and it will be completely unsorted. And this last one here is where you change the projection. So if you remember, uh, match is like the where, sort is like the order by, and then projection is like the select, the very part, oh, first part of your SQL statement. And this is where you specify what columns you want. So the default is it gives you all the columns. So if I remove this, we'll get all the columns here, including the underscore ID. So everything has an underscore ID column. But if you don't want the underscore ID column, you have to specify right here with a zero on it. So if I take that part off there, we'll see, we still get the ID column, but we only get the cuisine and grade, or address cuisine and grades. So see, address cuisine, grades. If I take uh, grades out, we see now it's gone. And it doesn't show up down here. But, um, oops, that whole thing's gone. Okay, so we'll just do this. So uh, if I take this out and make it empty set, we get everything, but then if I put the um, ID zero there, then it goes away. Okay, so the, the, if you wanna hide the ID, you do, do use that, otherwise you specify uh, only the ones you want. Also within here, I'll show you, this grid understands that this is a nested data set. If I double click here on the ellipsis, it brings up and shows me the values that are shown down here at the bottom. So you don't have to break it out into a separate grid if you want to, but I thought that looked cool, so that's why I did it that way. This sample showed you how to connect to MongoDB and define your match, sort, and projection with Firebase.